Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, SSH is an incredibly powerful tool. It allows you to remotely access devices on a network, even if they were hitless devices without a monitor. But SSH allows you to do so much more. And today we're going to be taking a look at tunneling. If you're going to be working with server applications that you only want access from one or a very small number of other endpoints on the network, then tunneling could be of use to you. You see, if you're going to be working with server software, one typical way of working with it, you know, during the testing stages, is to just expose it to your local network, at least if you're going to be working with that particular server from another device. And while that's okay, barring other more complicated configurations like firewalls and such, you may find it difficult to prevent other endpoints in the network from accessing your server. It might not be a huge issue, but if you want to be strictly safe about, well, administrating your server software, then you want a little bit more to take care of you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where the encrypted tunneling of SSH can come into the picture. Here's the idea. On your remote device, instead of running and exposing your server to the entire network, all you have to do is to run your server on the local interface. This of course means that no other device on the network can access your server. Then tell SSH to forward the ports from your remote device to your local client, the one that you're using to connect to the device and to administrate it. If you're using OpenSSH, you can use a command that looks like this. You're essentially defining a mapping between the remote IP address and port to your local IP address and port. And what's going to happen is all the traffic on this remote location is going to get tunneled through your SSH connection securely and in an encrypted manner to your local device. So here is a demonstration of that in action. I'm going to go ahead and call open SSH from the Windows command prompt, and I'm going to say I want to do port forwarding. I'll start by saying that this is the local address and this is the local port. I want to tunnel that through to the remote device. This, of course, is still the local host address, but this is referring to that of the remote device. And essentially, that's the address, and this is the port. This device is a Raspberry Pi, and I know that, well, this is the IP address. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and type in my password, like so. This, of course, locks me into my Raspberry Pi. And now I can go ahead and start up a server. server. So my server is now start now and it's running on local host of the remote device. And that's a special that's a part because I know the address of my Raspberry Pi. But if I tried to connect to it directly, that is not going to work because, well, the server is not listening on this IP address. Instead, on my local machine, I would just connect to port 8080. That is the port that I've bound it to. And when I run it, I indeed see the response from my server. But you can see from the server logs that it is seeing a connection, but to the server, that connection is coming from the local host. That's the magic. On both ends, it seems like I'm just working with the local device. On my clients, I'm just talking to OpenSSH, which is running on this port. On the remote server, it is also talking to the SSH provider, which is also running on a local on a port. But turns out because there is this underlying SSH connection, these two devices are actually talking to each other, even if these addresses tell us otherwise. That's the power of tunneling. Of course, this feature is not exclusive to OpenSSH. This is the PuTTY GUI configuration, which allows you to do something similar. Of course, the setup doesn't exactly look the same, but of course, all the important parts are here. Right, your local source ports, as well as the destination IP address and ports. So yeah, while well, we're using the context of OpenSSH, that doesn't mean that you don't have this kind of feature in another SSH program. So that is making use of the power of an SSH connection to protect whatever communications you have between yourself and your server that is not quite ready to go public. Of course, there are concerns here as well, if on your local device, you set this IP address to say something that's accessible on the network, then you are essentially still exposing the server, just that you're exposing it from your client device rather than from the remote device. That is one way of doing things, but if that's not the effect you intend to have, 
then you should be aware of it and be careful to avoid making that mistake. To be safe, it would be nice if you were to put in your local IP address regardless. Having said that, OpenSSH actually does allow you to leave out the parameter that is your local IP address, but according to the documentation, you are not guaranteed that this will run on the local loopback interface. So you should be careful. Anyway, there you have it, that's SSH tunneling, a secure way to, well, get information from a remote server onto your client device. Now, if you have no idea at all what's going on in this episode because I've used too many strange terms you've never heard before, well, I've anticipated that. In an upcoming Random Wednesday episode, we'll delve deeper into this exact same topic, but we'll sort of explain exactly what's going on during each step of this so that, yeah, you can have a better appreciation of what it means to work with devices on a network remotely and also to take into account some of the, well, cybersecurity concerns. So if you wanted a little bit more background, stay tuned for that. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and are feeling generous, a donation to this channel will be greatly appreciated. There's a link on screen and in the video description for more details. Meanwhile, please do like, comment, and subscribe. This helps the channel tremendously and gives me the means to do more. Thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.